Hello everyone and welcome back to another Algo Skills Leak Code tutorial video. In this video we're going to be going over Leak Code 2706 by 2 Chocolates. So we're going to break down the question, then we're going to move over to the whiteboard where we're going to kind of, um, you know, visualize how we're going to solve the problem and then we're going to write some code. So before we get into that, let me just say if you're serious about data structures and algorithms, you want to get better, you want to learn that dream job, then I would highly recommend checking out our course Algo Skills. Um, I'll leave the link in the top uh, at the top of the description. You know, I'm an ex Amazon software engineer. I've done it before. I've gotten into Fang before. I show you exactly how to do it. I teach you those skills. So if you really want to learn that dream job, I'd highly recommend checking that out. Link will be in the description below. So let's get into it. Let's first read the question. So um, you're given an integer array prices representing the prices of various chocolates in a store. Okay, so we just have some chocolates in a store and then we're given an array which has the price for each of them. So you are also given a single integer money which represents your initial money. Okay, that's pretty straightforward. Um, you must buy exactly two chocolates in such a way that you will have some non-negative leftover money. Okay, so we need to use our money. We need to buy two of the chocolates represented here and we need to have a non-negative amount of leftover money. So we need to have um, zero or greater money left over after we buy the two chocolates. Uh, you would like to minimize the sum of the prices of the two chocolates you buy. So you need to uh, get the price as low as possible. And then finally, return the amount of money you will have left over after buying the two chocolates. Um, if there is no way to buy two chocolates without ending up in debt, so below zero dollars, we just return money. Um, and then note that the leftover must be non-negative. Cool. So let's take a look at these two examples that they've given us. So we have prices one, two, two, and we have money of three. Uh, we've, they've returned zero, and that's just because we buy this one here, which is valued at one, and this one here, which has a price of two. So one plus two equals uh, three, which is equal to our money. So three take three equals zero. So we bought both those chocolates and we have zero dollars left over. Cool, so uh, example two, we have three, two, three. Those are the prices, and we have $3. So we just output three because the the cheapest we can get it is this $2 and this $3 or either of them. So that's a total of $5. That's the cheapest sum we can get, um, which obviously we don't have enough money to pay for. So we're just gonna return the original money we had, which is three. So I hope those examples make sense. Let's move over to the whiteboard and kind of uh, go into a bit more depth about how we're gonna solve this problem. So basically, if you kind of, it, if you look at those examples, you probably notice that what we're trying to do is we're just trying to select the two lowest, um, two cheapest prices. And that's kind of the key here when it says you would like to minimize the sum of the prices of the two chocolates you buy. So essentially what we can do then is we can take this problem here, which has you know a lot of extra info, and we can just uh, kind of map it over to a much simpler problem. And we can just bring it down to a simpler problem, which is let's find the two smallest elements in the array, right? Because it, we just need to find the two cheapest pieces of chocolate and then um, that's essentially the problem. So it, it makes it a lot easier when we just think about it. Okay, how do we find the two smallest elements in the array? So the way we're gonna be doing this is we're just gonna be going through the array. We're gonna go from left to right, go through the whole array, and then we're just gonna kinda keep track of uh, the two smallest elements that we've come across so far. So we have um, these two variables here, minimum one, this is going to be the smallest element we've seen so far. And minimum two, this is going to be the second smallest element we've seen so far. That's all we need to kind of keep track of. So um, we've initialized them both at infinity so that anything we have in our array is going to be um, smaller than it. Um, so let's go through the array and let's kind of look at how, how this works. So we'll start off with the first element here, five. And so we look at our smallest element we've seen so far, infinity. Is five smaller than infinity? Yes, okay. So what we need to do is we move our smallest element, uh, is now our second smallest element. Obviously they're both infinity, so nothing happens, but our smallest element becomes our second smallest element that we've seen so far. And then we replace our smallest element with the value that we're looking at, so five. Now let's move to the next one, so three. So then again, same thing, is three smaller than minimum one? So it is three smaller than five? Yes it is. Okay, so now we need to move five. Our smallest element becomes our second smallest element. So five now is our second smallest element. And then we put three in uh, in here. Okay, 
So now let's go over to seven. Okay, is seven smaller than three? No, okay. Is seven smaller than five? No, okay, it's not, it's not one of the two smallest elements that we've seen so far. So we're not gonna store it, we're not gonna deal with it. Let's go to four. So is four smaller than three? No. Is four smaller than five? Yes. Okay, so four is now the uh, second smallest element we've seen so far. So we just need to replace it. And then we have now gone through the entire array. So once we've done that, we need to work out how much, uh, how much this is gonna cost us. So if we just add these together, you'll see it's seven. And then, uh, so we can just do 10 take seven equals three. So we have three, uh, $3 left over, so we can just return three. So that's how we're gonna solve the problem conceptually. Now let's write some code. So if we go back to leak code, we'll create those two variables that we had there, minimum one, which is equal to infinity, and minimum two, which is also equal to infinity. And then now let's go through this array, uh, price by price, so for price, in prices, let's check if the price is less than our smallest one, so minimum one. If so, then we'll move minimum one to minimum two. So minimum two now equals minimum one. And then we're gonna set minimum one equal to the price. Alternatively, if, um, if it's not smaller than minimum one, but it is smaller than minimum two, in that case, we set minimum two equal to the current price. So that's gonna kinda do all of that uh, iteration through the array. That's all we need to do to find the two smallest elements. Then we'll find the remaining uh, money we have left over, if any. So money uh, minus minimum one minus minimum two. So that's gonna give us our remaining money after we paid for the two chocolates. And then, uh, Based on this, if there is no way for you to buy two chocolates without ending up in debt, return money. So if the remaining value is less than zero, then we're just gonna return money. Otherwise, you know, we aren't in debt, we can just return the remaining value. So let's see whether this is correct. Um, and as you can see, it runs fine. Usually usually it is more closer to the 50%. Obviously, leak codes, um, leak code, just varies a lot in my experience. So just note that when you run it, it's probably gonna be closer to the 50% mark. But basically, if we analyze uh, this efficiency, it's obviously O of N, we run through this whole array once, and um, and you'll also notice that it is a uh, constant space. We we just need to keep track of these, uh, these two variables. We don't need any variable space. So uh, I hope that video was helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. If it was helpful, please like and subscribe. Um, have a good one.